Okay, listen up, everybody. I'm betting on Buffalo, betting big time on Buffalo. Who wants in? Come on, come on, all comers. You got it? I'll take your money. Oh, you bet. Oh, no problem. Hey, whatever you want. The stupidest guy in the world will not be seen tonight so that we may bring you the following episode of Almost Live. <laughs> so much thank you you know I gotta say there's a lot of stuff going on this week the State of the Union address the Super Bowl is tomorrow but honestly for a lot of Seattleites the biggest story by far is that the doghouse is closing down oh. I know no I know we're serious I just cannot get used to the idea I'm never gonna be opening this menu again and I'm honestly I'm, I'm very I gotta tell you that when I was 10 years old I used to take the bus downtown to race slot cards at Bob Hale's hobby shop you know with my friends and the doghouse was seriously the only place that made us feel at home and I remember there was a cologne machine in the men's room that a lot of you guys here might remember that dispensed Old Spice and High Karate and JDs and all that stuff. And when you'd go into the bathroom, you'd put a dime in that and just sort of wait for your friend to get in front of it and then, boom, hit the plunger. A lot of people remember that, just Old Spice in the face, which was really fun. Also, there was a condom machine in that, and every boy in Seattle knew about that machine. Am I right, men? Yeah. Yes. Every boy remembers that because every boy in Seattle bought a condom from that machine when they were 12. <laughs> just in case. Just in case. You know. And, uh, you know, some other members of the staff had some memories of, uh, of the doghouse, too. So we just went down the street with a camera and documented those memories. And we want you to take a look at this now. For many years, I had to direct the St. Mark's Cathedral live broadcast on Christmas Eve. And I would always come to the doghouse for dinner. And it didn't matter. No matter how grumpy or pissed off I was, I always felt good coming here because the waitresses were always grumpier about having to work Christmas Eve than I was, so it made me feel kind of good. I, I guess my favorite memory has got to be, it was uh, oh, a few years ago during the fifth race, I put down about a hundred bucks on this three-year-old and, and it won. So, so that's probably my, my favorite memory, I think. Hmm? I'm gonna miss the fact that you could walk into the doghouse, have an entire meal, smoke half a pack of cigarettes without even lighting up. <laughs> I'm going to miss that yeah. nervous, excited, that roller coaster in your stomach feeling that you'd get as your 70-year-old waitress would struggle to put a scalding hot cup of coffee in front of you. Oh, when I was a kid, my parents used to bring me downtown and uh, yeah, I'd sit on Santa's knee right there in the big window and yeah, I'll, I'll never forget those times. <laughs> what? When I was like 10 years old, my buddies and I used to come down here to, we'd take the bus down here to play pinball and uh, We'd be there just playing the pinball machines, and you'd just hear this singing coming from the bar, which sounded a lot like, and just like that. And, and we would always just sort of look back there and wonder what, what's going on in the bar. And we just couldn't wait until we turned 21 so we could get in on that, whatever, whatever that was. The, the doghouse. Doghouse. It's, it's not ringing a bell. Sorry. <laughs> Anyway, of course, you know, a lot of other places in the greater Seattle area have their own traditions, and there's a new movie out that follows a couple groups who really identify with their hometowns, and we have a special promo clip for you. Take a look right now. They were the Bellevue Squares. 
When you're a square, you're a square all the way. From your first tall latte to your last tan booth day. They were the Factoria trash. We are the trash at Factoria. Our college class in Factoria. Throw up that stage at Factoria. We all get smashed in Factoria. <laughs> But the east side wasn't big enough for the both of them. Hey, Trash, this mall is our turf. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah? 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 It's East Side Story. It all began with a forbidden love. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah? At trash? Hmm? Huh? You couldn't even afford one drop of Clinique Girls Extra Moisturizing Night Lotion with Aloe. For men. Says who? We do. You do? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah? 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 A forbidden love that could not be quenched. Clinique Girl. I just met a girl named Clinique Girl. And suddenly that name will never be the same to me. I feel bitchy. Oh, so bitchy. I feel bitchy. I'm such a big bitch. Bitch, bitch, bitchy. That's me. I am such a big, big bitch. La, 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 la. A forbidden, unquenchable love that ignited a burning passion. Tonight, tonight, it all began tonight. I saw you and my zits went away. There's a place for us. Perhaps it's Aberdeen. <laughs> A forbidden, unquenchable love that ignited a burning passion that then led to a blaze of tragedy. Come on, squares. It's time to take out the trash. Come on, trash. Let's kick some square butt. Your pants are so in style. Not. Yeah, well, you've got a faggy haircut. That's because he's gay. What are you, homophobic? <laughs> no. All right, enough of the chit-chat. Let's rumble! Yeah, let's rumble! He's got a beef stick! It's he's got a cell phone! <laughs> Listen to me, we don't have to fight anymore. We can live together in peace and shop at the same stores. Tony! Tony, what are you doing? Clinique girl. <laughs> this is so embarrassing. And you're wearing that tacky shirt. I told you not to wear this anymore. Look, Daddy is trying to get you into law school, but it's never going to happen if you keep wearing this shirt. Now, come on, get up. Come on. You're getting all dirty. It's going to ruin the seats in my femur, Tony. East Side Story. Life, love, and skin care from the other side of the bridge. God, this has been such a horrible day. All right, stay with us. We've got a great show. We'll be right back. Promotional consideration for Almost Live provided by Ballard Computer in Seattle, Kirkland, Tacoma, Mount Vernon, and South Center.
members of the 103rd Congress, my fellow Americans. After years of leaders whose rhetoric attacked bureaucracy... But We're about the same age, but I'm not showing any gray. I look a lot like the guy in those the Superman movies, I think. I shouldn't have eaten those beer nuts. I am so thirsty right now. I told him to blend that nose makeup. People who bring children into this world cannot and must not... Craft dodger. From them. <laughs> but I just gotta have a drink of water here. I don't know why, but I'd just like to kick Monaghan's butt. Why does Reno keep looking over here? Welfare reform. Cameras on me. Big smile. Big smile. Okay, it's off. <laughs> What's he talking about? That's not the way I wrote it. To those who cut Medicare without protecting seniors... I'm absolutely dying up here. That's the way I wrote it. people's health care can't perpetuate yep. a system that actually penalizes those who stay together. He said penalize. <laughs> I'm gonna talk all night. I'm dying up here. I gotta have a drink of water. That's it. I've had it. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. Now, Wait a minute, this is year, straight year vodka. Year. Now is the time. Who the hell left the this up here? Who sent us here? Now. I, uh, I wonder where I left my drink. <laughs> okay, everybody, please take your seats. Can we all please take your seats now? All right, thank you. Thank you very much for coming. And I want to thank you once again for taking a look at the Seattle Public Schools. Now, for those of you who are new into the system in Seattle, every family has issued a list of schools that they're allowed to go to, and you must give us your top three choices by the end of this week. Now, of course, you don't have to send your kids to public schools. Uh, well, I guess you could send them to Bush or Lakeside. Yeah, let's see. That'd, uh, that'd probably set you back about 20 grand a year, not counting books, clothes, and rehab. <laughs> or... <laughs> Yes, you can move out to the east side. They got great schools out there. Yeah, that's what you can think about when you're stuck on the bridge for three hours every day. Yeah, great schools. And I've turned into the beauty bark spreading, lawn mowing east side jerk that I've despised all my life. <laughs> anyway, we want to help you find the right school. Now, this is why we've developed many specialty magnet schools. If you'll turn your attention over here, for example, this year new, we have the odd smelling older teachers elementary. <laughs> The All Dodgeball School, very popular school. The Smoking Area School. Yeah. Uh, also, the school for big kids who developed physically before everyone else. <laughs> and new this year, the Magnet School for the study of magnets. <laughs> all right, those are all available. And we have some principals here who are ready to meet with you today. We have Richard Haverhoven from whatever, our alternative school. <laughs> and. Don Bunt from Neil Armstrong High, our more traditional school. Gentlemen, if you could tell us a little bit about your schools, please. <clears throat> the alternative school is an adventure, an adventure among friends. My kids don't call me Mr. Haverhoven. They call me Dick. I say, I say, hi, Jason, and he says, hi, Dick. <laughs> and we look at the way each individual person learns. Some kids learn math from books some from interpretive dancing, and some by sneaking out the window and letting the air out of my tires. And that's great. That's the kind of experience that you cannot get in a textbook. That's super, that's super. Our school is very clean, cleanest school you're gonna find. We motivate kids to do their best, and if they do, everybody gets sloppy joes and pudding on Friday. <laughs> you got any questions? Uh, yes. Uh, what do you do to foster the children's sense of independence, decision-making, and self-government? I don't know what the hell you're talking about. <laughs> That's a very good question. It's a very important topic that we integrate into our curriculum. Last year, for example, to explain the democratic voting process, we let the kids vote on a new name for the school. Oh, did you now? What did they come up with? Uh, Iron Maiden Elementary. <laughs> yeah, what are the requirements for graduation at your schools? Well, first we check their aura to make sure they've attained a higher level of consciousness. <laughs> Basically, the kids just kind of leave whenever they feel it's right for them. I say, if you love something, let it go. All right, let me put it this way. If your kid keeps quiet and clean and puts in the time, we'll let him go. 
Yeah, I'm real concerned about violence in the schools. What if a kid brings a gun to school? If a child shoots another child, he is talked to in a non-accusatory manner. <laughs> he is told that it is an inappropriate expression of anger, and he is placed in a timeout room for nine minutes. We got no problem. <laughs> Nobody's ever gotten a drop on me yet. All right, uh, thank, you very, thank you very much, gentlemen. All right, now, now, we want you to fill out your forms, and in a few months, you're going to get one of these scratch-off tickets. Now, you scratch them real hard, and if, for example, you match three bulldogs, your kid's going to Garfield. Three old Scandinavians, that's Ballard High. And if you have a ticket that has three Ed McMahons on it, you're a $10 million winner, so congratulations. Your kids are going to Lakeside. So we'll see the rest of you in September. Bye-bye. Short on time, how would you like another eight hours a day? Hi, I'm Albert Goldman, and I can show you how to get back that time with the help of the Albert Goldman Stop Sleeping Seminar. That's right, I said stop, I said stop sleeping. You don't need to sleep. You don't need to sleep, and I, my seminar could show you how. I haven't slept in 16 years, and I feel great. And I'm filthy rich from all those people that sign up for the seminar. People like this. Yeah, it's great. I, I'm a surgeon, and I've really been logging the hours in OR. And with all the extra time, I'm studying uh, how, how to be a plastic surgeon. Before the Stop Sleeping seminar, I didn't have any time for sports. But now I do. Hey, I'm up and hit me. Give me the ball. Give me the ball. Come on. I'm for it all now. <laughs> I'm a successful businesswoman and super mom. Hey, kids, watch out. It's almost dinner time. <laughs> I've had time to explore my creative side since attending the Gilbert Albumen Slop Steeping Seminary. As a TV news reporter in a competitive business, I need every advantage I can get. Albert Goldman has given me the time I need to research those hard-hitting investigative interviews. As a telemarketer, the Stop Sleeping Seminar has nearly doubled my sales, but for some reason I can't stop crying. Hello? You want to buy something? So remember, if you want more time, stop dreaming about it. <laughs> get, get it? Stop dreaming about it. <laughs> and sign up for the Albert Goldman Stop Sleeping Seminar. <clears throat> I'll see you, Seattle, at the SeaTac. <laughs> Red Lion Inn. Thursday, February. February. Albert! Al! Huh? How would you like another eight hours a day? <laughs> Hi, I'm Albert Goldman, and I can show you how Welcome to the John Report. I'm John. Here's my report. Well, for the second time in seven months, Bill Gates has had a traffic ticket dismissed on a technicality. A police spokesperson said that just like last time, the technicality is that Gates is worth eight billion bucks. <laughs> the Yakima Indian tribe is changing the spelling of their name to Y-A-K-A-M-A. -A -A. However, the town, Yakima, will remain the same because most of the residents had just learned to spell it the old way. <laughs> Seattle's prop and costume is building a giant moose head for an L.A. billboard to attract filmmakers to Alaska. Idaho officials like the idea and have asked the company to build them a giant skinhead. <laughs> the Seattle P.I. named Randy Johnson its Sports Star of the Year. Former Husky Jason Shelley was given the same award by Runner's World. <laughs> well, State Senator Ray Moore, who represents the Magnolia area, actually lives in Hawaii. Moore has defended this arrangement, saying, quote, Hawaii and Magnolia are actually quite similar. If you, <laughs> if you take away the fact that Hawaii is a lush tropical paradise full of half-naked women rubbing oil all over themselves. Other than that, just the same. <laughs> At the upcoming Allied Arts Auction, one of the items up for bid is having your oil changed by King County Executive Gary Locke. Another item up for bid is having your finances done by Tim Hill. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I'm not like... 
Terrace Fire Department recently refused to rescue a cat in a tree because, as a spokesperson explained, we've never seen a cat skeleton in a tree. <laughs> However, he did say that Earl once had seen a goat with two heads. <laughs> a fire destroyed part of downtown Bellingham on Friday. Firemen said their efforts were hampered by a huge crowd that stood around staring at the fire and going, Dude, that's a big fire. <laughs> this has been the John Report. Thank you. We'll be right back. Now, here is Republican response to the State of the Union address. You realize we're on, Senator. Sure, I just can't think of anything besides the beep, 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 beep thing. Yeah, well, that was good. Uh, you've done that a couple times, so you want to call it quits? I guess. This has been Republican response to the State of the Union address. <laughs>